Hello and welcome to the Marketing Mix Model series, the science behind advertising investment. I want to welcome you to this new series in which uh, what I will try to do is to explain as simple as I can what are marketing mix modeling, how can they can be useful to you and for the purpose of growing your e-commerce business or your business in general. And uh, we're going to see how you can do it following a tutorial, tutorial videos on how to do a marketing mix modeling on Excel. So it's going to be super duper easy. There will be no coding involved, just some formulas on Excel, but it will be super easy. I mean, yeah, we're going to see what are MMMs, marketing mix modeling, and what the, what's the procedure behind this kind of framework of analysis and how they can be used to grow. So discover analytics techniques to maximize ROAS. That's, that's our goal that we want to see and find a way to, uh, maximize ROAS in a scientific way. And that's the purpose of this video. I'm going to explain you how. So, um, but before we dive in, uh, why should you listen to me? I'm a marketing geek, obviously, as my outfit says, but, um, my name is Gabriel Franco. I'm in, I'm from Italy and I'm founder of Abruda marketing, which is a growth agent, growth hacking agency that managed over $12 million um in advertising spent last year we contributed to over 10x growth of multiple startups here in italy and we created uh, the first marketing mix modeling program for free to the public in italian it had a lot of success so my idea was why don't translate it and put it for everyone and then i created my tech startup it's called cassandra and it uses to uh, it uses marketing mix model techniques and AI to predict what to spend on each channel to maximize your ROI. So um, I have had some experience in marketing mix modeling and in marketing especially. So uh, I'm ready to dive in on what's real marketing mix modeling. So as you can see here, marketing mix modeling are statistical techniques applied to historical data to understand the marginal contribution that each individual factor has on our sale. These are all fancy words just to say uh, they are statistical techniques that help us understand on understand what's the contribution on how much sales varies based on how much I invest on Facebook cats varies. So it, it's a game of variations and uh, it, it let us understand what's the contribution of uh, a, on spending on Facebook ads, for example, and let us understand what's how, what would be the ROI on $100 spent on Facebook ads. Obviously, all these techniques do not involve cookies. Because they're statistical techniques and they do not use MTA, as we can we will see, they will let us understand how it's, how's the contribution on each marketing investment and will leave us and let us understand how to distribute budget ultimately. We're going to see how. Now, um, let's see the difference between MTA, which is multi-touch attribution and what we are used to in in most of digital marketing and marketing mix model. MTA or multi-touch attribution is just what Google Analytics does or Facebook Ads dashboard does or Google Ads does. It uses uh, cookie technology to track every single user behavior on our site. Then what it does, it aggregates everything and let us see the dashboard and the numbers go up and down every time. But the idea behind multi-touch attribution is to track any single user in our website to see where they came, where they come from and where they came from all their lives. Obviously, uh, in this period of time after iOS 14, this has uh, numerous, numerous disadvantages. With new uh, cookie restriction policies, um, 
there are really big discrepancy between uh, what Google Analytics, for example, is tracking and what's reality. Let's say, for example, if someone uh, goes, uh, in, goes in private in his browser, the user is not tracked properly. Or if it doesn't apply and doesn't click on accept cookie, you will not track very well that particular user. So there are some limitations right now in multi-touch attribution. And it's important to understand that multi-touch attribution focuses on the user. Marketing mixed modeling, on the other end, focuses on how efficient are your investments. Basically, the focus switches from um, the user to how well your marketing investment perform. So the game is completely different. And it's marketing mixed models have a, a more financial perspective compared to the multi-touch attribution perspective, which is more human behavioral. And, and marketing mixed models have been have started have, have been invented in 1960 from corporates that wanted to understand how to allocate budgets properly in a scientific way in order to make easier to achieve corporate goals because in the 60s they did not have multi-touch attribution or google analytics to base their decision on they needed to make decision in a microwave and they needed a scientific way and they used and invented marketing and mixed modeling. After the 2010, um, after 2010, with the event on Google search, uh, Facebook and social media, et cetera, and multi-touch attribution, these statistical techniques have, have had uh, a downtrend, it's had a downtrend, but now with cookie restriction, uh, marketing mixed models and marketing mixed modeling is becoming again super famous super useful for the work of an everyday everyday marketing analyst so continuing this video um this episode uh, what are they used for we understand that they focus on marketing investment but what they what what are marketing mix models used for they're used for statistical attribution uh, if you don't consider multi-touch and multiple touch points over time before purchase, uh, what you have is a statistical attribution or how any investment, an investment on a particular channel contributes to the overall sales. Then we can uh, estimate what's the ROI, not only on digital media, but also on offline media. So any investment in your company, it can be also product. It can be an investment on a new partner, a new agency. It can be measured and estimate. You can estimate its ROI statistically, and it unlocks a lot of uh, a lot of new possibilities. Because a lot of uh, many times, uh, in my experience, my agency, I wanted to invest in influencer marketing, but I had no, I had no tool to measure the result that that particular influencer was getting. Now, with the event of marketing mix modeling, we can. Then we can forecast. We can use marketing mix model to create a formula that can create a model that can forecast the future with a fixed error and a fixed accuracy. So we have pretty good um, forecasting capabilities on marketing mix modeling. And ultimately, what we can do is manage our models to receive suggestions and insights on how to allocate budget to maximize ROI, to maximize revenue, or to maximize uh, number of conversions. And we can do that with marketing mix modeling. What are the factors right now that are inside marketing mix modeling? I mean, uh, we consider um, every factor that influences our sales. We can start with uh, competitors. Our competitors, how much they spend every time, every day on advertising, how much traffic they get, how many backlinks they have, and what's the price of their product influence our sales. 
So we can we should consider the these data inside our marketing mix. Then we have offline media, how much we spend in offline media and where they are located. They can be TV, they can be billboards, it doesn't matter. Um, then we have digital media, obviously how much we spend on TikTok, programmatic, uh, Krito, um, uh, Google search, Bing search, etc. Then we have price and promotion. We know that there is a price elasticity. Basically what is said in econometrics is um, the lower is your price, the more is the demand for a product. We cannot only see clearly and and, and and see that this is true in marketing mix modeling, but we can measure. We can measure how many sales we can get more if we lower the price. So we can create simulations on what would be the, the scenario if we lower the price 20% and see how many sales we would, we would increase in that particular period. And then we have seasonality. Seasonality, um, in this case, we know especially in the e-commerce business direct to consumer, um, seasonality have a really huge impact. But as I, as I said before, we do not only see the impact, we can measure it. So we can measure what's the impact of seasonality on January compared to December. This is huge. We can forecast and plan our inventory really well with this marketing mix modeling. And then there are external factors that can be uh, COVID data, I mean COVID, number of cases every day, or it can be old prices, uh, or it can be also uh, um, monetary exchange rates. And we can, we can leverage all this data to create a model, but how it works. There is a process that needs to be followed, that there are a lot of processes actually in the data science uh, world, but uh, this is the simplest and the one I use every time. Uh, the process is uh, as form is formed by three parts. The first is measure. So you have every all your data centralized and you try to measure what every variable's impact and what's the ROI on each investment. If the variable obviously it's an investment. Then you can forecast. You try to understand what, uh, estimate what's the advertising investment response and create a scenario simulation, as we said before. And then we have optimization. So we try to create a, a pro optimization problem that optimizes for something. For example, it can maximize sales, it can maximize ROI, or can minimize uh, cost per order, for example. But in, in the practical way, how does it work? I mean, marketing mix modeling, it's, it's a trend right now, obviously, but how does it work practically? So as we can see here, we have a time series uh, sales data. So we have sales data by every week. And from this, we cannot see much, but I noticed these two uh, peaks. Uh, one spike, positive spike, one negative spike and i want to learn why there are these two spikes what's changed in these two weeks that uh, got an opposite trend so what we do is we use a tool in marketing mix models called marketing mix modeling decomposition it basically what it does it estimates the contribution on each factor that we include in our marketing mix, which is how much holiday impacted, how much ads impacted, how much TV, con TV spent impacted and how much price impacted. And we can estimate uh, what are its sales. And what we can see here uh, is that the positive spike was due basically because we lowered price here so uh, we lowered price and there was a holiday. In that particular case, we increased price again and there was no holiday. Holidays have a positive impact on sales. And when there is no holiday, there are less sales. In this way, there are uh, at least 100, uh, there is $100 variation on, on that particular week. 
So from this data, the common question would be how much historical data do I need and how I do I structure it? I, I would say uh, this is only personal. There is uh, an opinion almost because uh, there are a lot of uh, school of thoughts on, about it. But I would suggest to use at least one year with it, one year of historical data with a daily breakdown at least, or a minimum of three years with a weekly breakdown. The philosophy behind it is the more history you have on your data, the more accurate the model would be in your forecasts. So, and how you structure data? I have a simple framework that I'm gonna to propose to you. Um, basically what, what we do in the market mix modeling procedure is um, including in the first column, the time variable. So how, what is your time variable? Can be daily, monthly, weekly, uh, any row needs to represent the aggregated data on that particular time frame. Then I have the second column, which is my upper variable and it represents sales or conversion generally. And then the rest of, um, uh, of the columns are input variables. It can be price, it can be advertising spent, it can be holidays, or it can be seasonal, obviously, which is an holiday. Once I have centralized everything, which is super, um, it, it, it's a complex data engineering uh, topic, if you want, I can create a video tutorial on that. But once you centralize everything, what we can do, uh, we, what we should do is transform one column. Particularly, I want to transform this particular column, which is the advertising. And we would transform it using two transformation uh, formulas. The first one is the ad stock. And the ad stock, it's, uh, the concept behind ad stock is that um, I'll explain with an example. If you invest ten thousand dollars today on TV advertising, not not all the people that see the ad will buy today. Some people will buy tomorrow, or some people will buy next week. So. Uh, because um, it's because the investment has not the response in the same day that the, that when you made the investment, we need to approximate in order to make the model more real as possible. So we need to estimate what's the effect on marketing and advertising investment over time. So we make and create a model that's super uh, as real as possible. And we can use a transformation uh, called a ad stock. Uh, it's this one, which states that ad stock at time T is just ad stock at time T minus one. So the ad stock that you had uh, day before times beta, which is in beta is a value between zero and one plus how much you spent at time T. So in this way, with this transformation formula, you can transform the uh, advertising spent that we see here into an ad stock, uh, an ad stock variable. Then what we have, once we uh, transformed our advertising spent into ad stock, we can transform it in diminishing returns. And diminishing returns are a transformation that um, validate the fact that investments have not linear uh, ROI depending on volume. Basically, if you spend $100, uh, you have 10 sales. If you and, and tomorrow you decide to spend $10,000, you'd probably not have um, 1,000 sales because the return in econometrics, the, the higher is the volume, the lower is the return. And the same logic applies here. So what we do is, is we take a, we create a power function that describes uh, this diminishing return. And we use the formula diminishing return equal the ad stock at time t um, powered at alpha, which 
alpha is a value between 0 and 1. So now we transformed everything. Uh, we transformed the advertising. We centralize all our data into one space. And what we need to do is uh, to deploy, deploy our learning algorithm. And there are two main, in data science, there are two main uh, learning algorithm. There is a regressors and there are classifiers. For marketing mixed models, uh, the most used is regressor. And there are two types of uh, regressors learning algorithms. There are white boxes and black boxes. White boxes are mainly linear regression, based regression, regressor, regressor trees. And these are all the regressors that can be understood. The formula that comes out of these uh, learning algorithms can be understood by uh, the human mind. They're super useful for uh, diagnostic analysis to see what, what happened in the past, but they're not accurate as the black boxes. And the black boxes are neural network, deep, deep learning, begging regressors, uh, random forest. And these are all the uh, regressors that uh, cannot be understood by uh, the formulas that comes out of these learning algorithms cannot be understood by the human mind. And so they're not really good for diagnostic analysis and looking at the past, but they're really, really, really accurate for the future. So both of these uh, white box regressors and black box regressors are used for different purposes and have uh, different objectives. Then we have, we can measure, as we said, uh, the first thing we need to do is measure the contribution on each factor that we have. Obviously, uh, TB has high contribution, price has a negative contribution. As we said, we lower price, we have more demand. If we increase prices, uh, we have less demand. So it's negative. Uh, it would have a negative coefficient, a negative, a negative contribution. Then we have ads and all day, as we see. We can estimate ROI or ROAS in this case. So we can estimate what's the ROAS on uh, TV investment or ads investment. And we can make predictions. In this case, what we did is create uh, with a deep neural network a model that predicted sales over time, number of transactions. And it's pretty good, as we can see. And we can actually predict uh, what will be in the future based on our inputs. And we, would, we can do that through a simulator. As you can see here, we can click it. This is a simple model I created in order to simulate various scenarios on my uh, on, on this particular uh, client. So I would say that um, it uses neural network in order to predict the future. And I would say the day of the week today is Tuesday. The month is February. And I will. I don't want to spend anything. Let's see what, what happens if I spend anything and I have no sessions. So if I have no sessions, that it never happens, so it's not really good. But if I have 100 sessions one day, I would have 1.7 transactions. And if I spend uh, $127, $126, I would have 15 transactions, 8.41 CPA cost per action and $415 of profit. If I increase Google, uh, my profit will lower. What happens if, okay, I would have, if I spent $43 on Google, I would have 16.49 transactions and my profit would increase a little because the contribution on Google, it's really low compared to Facebook's. So. Going back to our presentation, um, we've seen predictions and how we can simulate scenario in order to predict and simulate the future. And we can actually, it's a little more complicated. We're going to see how, how to do on Excel, but we can create a model that describes how to distribute budget differently in order to maximize revenue or sales or conversions. 
And notes in the marketing, market mix modeling are analytical techniques that simulate reality to help us make better decisions. And they are never, they never reflect 100% reality. Any, uh, any analytical tool does not reflect 100% reality. What we're going to do in the next episode is to create a marketing mix model with Excel, unlocking all the information that you saw in this video. So we're going to dive in into, into exploration. We're going to dive into uh, the transformation of variables. We're going to dive into uh, the learning algorithms that we're going to see, uh, we're going to use. And we're going to dive in and we're going to explain step by step every single model that we create. So see you next video. And it's been a pleasure. See ya.